Welcome to our backyard makeover video. We completely transformed our backyard. I'll show you how we built a floating deck, planted a tree in a tire border, installed a new lawn over our tired existing lawn, built a new gazebo, added a new second story deck with under deck storage, and installed a new electric awning over our new second story deck. If you enjoy this video, then please throw us a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. First, the floating deck. Choose the location for your deck. Place the four-way deck blocks at regular intervals along the perimeter of the deck. Ensure they are level and positioned according to your deck's design. Construct the frame. Use pressure-treated lumber to build the frame of the deck. Start by installing the outer rim joists, ensuring they are square and level. Then, install the interior joists, spacing them evenly according to the load requirements and local building codes. Attach the joists to the rim joists using joist hangers or metal post anchors for additional support. Check for levelness. Use a level to ensure that the deck is perfectly level in all directions. Make any necessary adjustments by adding or removing gravel beneath the deck blocks or make pressure-treated shims to place between the deck blocks and the frame. Install the decking boards. Lay the decking boards across the joists, leaving a small gap between each board to allow for drainage and expansion. Secure the boards to the joists using galvanized nails or deck screws. Trim any excess boards to achieve a clean edge. Finish the deck. Once the deck is level and securely fastened, you can add any desired finishing touches. This may include sanding the deck surface, applying a weather-resistant stain or paint, or adding railings or other decorative elements. To finish the sides, use pressure-treated plywood as skirting. This will give you a neater look and prevent animals from living under the deck. It's a good idea to add a step on at least one side of the deck. I added a step on the side where it would cover the exposed deck block. If you want to cover the deck blocks on the corners, you can build deck bump outs here. These bump outs work good for installing deck umbrellas or decorating your deck with potted plants. The last step would be to paint or stain any extra features you've added to the deck. In this case, they are the skirting, the step and the bump outs to cover the deck blocks. Here is the tree I'll be planting. I've previously inlaid a tire in a hole I dug before adding the sod to the old garden area. The hole under the tire is large enough to accommodate for the roots of the tree as well as some quality soil for the roots. Begin filling the hole with a good topsoil. I'm using miracle Grow. Layer the bottom with a few inches of soil and pack it into the sides of the tire. Carefully remove the tree from its container and place it in the center of the tire bordered hole. Ensure that the tree is positioned upright and at the desired depth. Backfill the hole with the soil mixture, gently tamping it down to eliminate air pockets and provide stability to the tree. Give the newly planted tree a thorough watering, saturating the soil around its roots. You can also apply a layer of organic mulch, such as wood chips or shredded bark, around the base of the tree within the tire border. Mulching helps retain moisture, suppresses weed growth, and insulates the soil. Next, I'll lay new sod over my existing lawn. Laying sod over an existing lawn requires some preparation to ensure successful results. Once covered, the old lawn will die quickly, 
and provide nutrients for the sod. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to lay sod over an existing lawn. I've added one more step on my lawn, which is to sprinkle a thin layer of topsoil over the lawn before laying the sod. I believe this will give the roots a better chance to survive while the other lawn is breaking down. So let's begin. Start by mowing the existing lawn as short as possible and removing any debris such as rocks, sticks, or branches. Rake the area thoroughly to level the surface and remove any remaining loose grass or weeds. Before laying the sod, water the existing lawn thoroughly. This will help moisten the soil and provide a good base for the new sod. The soil should be damp but not overly saturated. Begin laying the sod by laying the first row of sod along a straight edge, such as a sidewalk or driveway. Unroll the sod and lay it against the existing lawn, ensuring there are no gaps or overlaps between the pieces. Use a sharp knife or sod cutter to trim the edges as needed to fit the desired shape of your lawn. In subsequent rows, stagger the sod pieces like bricks, so the seams between the sod do not align with one another. This will create a more stable and aesthetically pleasing result. Once the sod is laid, use a lawn roller or simply walk over it to ensure good soil-to-sod contact. This will help eliminate air pockets and promote root growth. Water the newly laid sod immediately and thoroughly to settle it in place. Aim to moisten the soil to a depth of 4 to 6 inches. Fill the gaps between the sod pieces with topsoil. Sprinkle grass seed over the topsoil and mix it in. Even new sod might have some dead spots. Spread some topsoil over these spots and mix in some grass seed. This is after I've filled all of the cracks between the sod pieces. And this is after I've mixed in the grass seed. Fertilizing newly laid sod is an important step to help it establish and develop strong roots. Lightly fertilize the sod immediately after laying it. Be careful not to apply too much fertilizer in one area, as it can cause burning or uneven growth. After applying the fertilizer, thoroughly water the sod to help the nutrients penetrate the soil and reach the roots. Water the sod regularly, keeping the soil moist but not soggy, for the first few weeks until the roots establish. Now I'll assemble the gazebo. Step 1. Attaching the post base. Step 2. Connecting the rafter beam connector and post cap. Step 3. Connecting the beams. Step 4. Attaching the crossbeam and post and post cap. Step 5. Attaching the crossbeam and post and post cap, continued. Step 6. Attaching the big roof long frame and big roof short frame and big roof corner frame. Step 7. Attaching the rafter.
Steps 8 and 9. Attaching the middle beam and middle beam connector. Step 10. Attaching the small roof rafter and small connector and hook. Step 11. Attaching the small roof rafter and big roof corner frame. Step 12. Attaching the small roof short panel flashing and small roof long panel flashing. Step 13. Attaching the small roof side panel. Step 14. Attaching the small roof rafter cap and top cover. Step 15. Attaching the big roof short small beam and big roof long small beam. Step 16. Attach the mosquito netting rod. Step 17. Attaching the panel flashing. Step 18. Attaching the roof panel order. Step 19. Attaching the roof panel. Step 20. Attaching the big roof rafter cap. Step 21. Attaching the mosquito netting. Step 22. Anchor the frame, screw down or attach the stake bases. Step 23. Attaching the remote control. Step 24. Attaching the batteries. Now for one of the handiest additions to our backyard makeover, the second story deck with built-in storage. First, make the footings. Mark out for the footings. Dig holes for the footings. In our area we need to make it 4 feet, or 1.2 meters deep, to pass the frost line. For our first attempt, we are using a gas-powered earth auger with a 12-inch, or 30-centimeter, bit. The ground is still frozen, so this isn't working. We need to come up with a plan B.
we decided to rent a mini digger auger. It still took a little time, but it worked. Remove the remaining loose earth from the holes. Put a building form tube into each hole, leaving the top just above the ground level. Cut rebar into the correct lengths. I'm using fiberglass rebar which is easy to cut. Mix concrete and fill the building form tubes flush with the top. Insert three pieces of rebar into each footing. Insert a steel post support, saddle bracket into each footing. Now to frame the new deck. I'll leave the old deck up as long as possible so that we will have stairs while constructing the new deck. I will also use the existing frame of the old deck to help align the new deck and remove it from under the new deck after the new posts and beams are in. To start with, remove the end plate. Mark where the new floor joists will go. Screw on the joist hangers. Feed the new floor joists over the beam, beside the old floor joists, and fasten them on using the joist hangers. We decided to remove the old rails now because they were in our way. Temporarily screw the new floor joists to the old beam to keep them aligned. Screw on the end plate. Fasten temporary blocks where the beam will go. Hold the first of the three layers of the beam against the blocks and screw it to the floor joists. Add the next two layers of beams, one at a time, applying PL400 on the insides of them first. Wedge temporary supports under the beam. Now you can install some more floor joists. Remove the old stair rails. Install the new posts. Remove the old posts. Install the beam for the landing. Install the posts for the landing. Remove the old stairs. Apply decking and waterproof the deck. First you need to bend some flat stock aluminum sheets to put between the floor joists of the deck. Bend it so that it hangs down more on the outside to give it a slope. I'm bending it to hang 1 inch, or 2.5 centimeters, at the top, and 2 inches, or 5 centimeters, at the bottom.
Cut the bent aluminum sheets to length. Bend it at the bottom so that when installed, it will direct the water down at this point. I will be directing the water into a eaves trough. Lay the aluminum sheets between the floor joists and tack them on. To give it extra protection, I bent some extra wide flashing. This will bring the water farther away from the house before dropping onto the aluminum sheets. Push this extra flashing against the wall under the existing flashing and nail it on. As you can see, if you pour water on the panel it will flow to the bottom. Now you can nail on the composite or wood decking. Fasten the part of the aluminum sheet that folds down. I also put some aluminum over the exposed corner and applied some caulking. Attach an eaves trough onto the beam to catch the water. To make it look better, I first attached a 2x6 to the beam and cladded it with aluminum fascia. I then screwed the eaves trough to the 2x6. Do a water test to make sure everything's working correctly. Attach the eaves trough. Do a final water test. Build the stairs. Mark out where you want the stairs to start. Make the distance from the top to the first tread the same as the rise of the other treads, which in this case is 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. Fasten one stringer on each side with lag bolts. As you go, make sure the treads are level. Lay sidewalk blocks underneath to support the stairs. Fill the area between the sidewalk blocks and the bottom of the stringers. I'm using pieces of old treated posts. Bolt decking boards on the stringer treads. Use 2x6 and bolt them from underneath the stringer treads with lag bolts. Because of the height of our deck, we need two more steps. So here we added a two step stringer. Build the deck railing. Cut the posts to size. Attach the post connector plates at the bottom. Attach the posts to the deck. Attach the post caps. Screw the rail hangers onto the top and bottom wood rails. Decide how high you want the top rail, and screw on the bottom rail so that the top rail will end up at the correct height. Our top rail is 42 inches, or 106 centimeters, high to meet our building code for a second story deck. Put one rail connector and one metal baluster into each hole in the bottom rail.
put one rail connector on the top of each baluster. Take the top rail and work one baluster into each hole. Then screw the top rail to the two posts. Now to build the stair railing. Install the posts. Cut the top and bottom rails. Mark the top and bottom rails for where the balusters will go. Drill holes part way into the rails to insert the balusters into. Put some black tape on the drill bit to indicate how far to drill into the rails, and drill to that point. This is the stair rail kit with the balusters I'm using. Screw on the bottom rails. Insert the balusters between the bottom and top rails into the holes that you drilled, and screw on the top rails. Build under deck storage, lay landscape fabric on the ground to stop grass and weeds from growing there. Extend it past the ends to allow for a border later. Determine where the walls will go. I'm using small bricks under the walls to keep them off the ground. Frame the wall. Nail sheathing to the wall. Install the pot lights. I did some of this before framing, and some after. We're ready to install the siding. Tack on a waterproof barrier like tar paper or Tyvek. Nail on the corners. I'm using wood corners to match the house. Install the vinyl J trim. Install the siding. Now to build the door. Cut lumber to make a frame one and a half inches or 3.8 centimeters narrower than the opening into the height that you want. Screw on one L bracket at each corner to hold the door together. Cut the cross member to stabilize the door and screw it on. Now screw two brackets on the outside of the frame on the hinge side. Attach the hinges. Hang the door in the opening with screws through the hinges. Attached door stops to the inside of the door frame. Attach the cladding.
Attach the door handle and hook lock. Install concrete and rubber pavers. First you need to cover the ground with landscape fabric to prevent grass and weeds from growing between the pavers. Leave extra fabric at the edges. Spread a thin layer of pea gravel over the fabric where the pavers will go. This will be used to level the pavers. Lay the pavers over the pea gravel. Adjust the pea gravel to level the paver. Remove the pea gravel around the outside that is not covered by the pavers. Now lift or remove the pavers. Fold the extra landscape fabric over the pea gravel and replace the paver. This will prevent the pea gravel from coming out from under the paver. And finally, the awning. First, assemble the fabric tube. Slide the fabric tube connector into the two sides of the fabric tube, aligning two screw holes on each side. Put a screw into each hole. Now, slide the awning fabric into the fabric tube. Two sides of the awning fabric have splines in them. Insert one of the splines into the groove on one side of the fabric tube. Then slide it in until the entire spline is in the fabric tube. Roll the fabric over the fabric tube. Connect the two sides of the torsion bar and the front bar with the torsion bar connector and the front bar connector. Align the screw holes and put a screw into each hole. Insert the other fabric spline of the fabric on the fabric tube into the top groove of the front bar and slide it in. When the fabric tube reaches the motor, slide the fabric tube over the motor. Slide the loose end of the fabric tube into the side of the awning frame. Insert the valance spline into the bottom groove of the front bar and slide it in. Slide the fabric fixer into the front bar groove next to the valance and tighten the screw. Then cover the end with the right front bar end. Attach the manual rotary lever using the metal clip. Attach the wall brackets to the wall above the door. Make sure you fasten them into studs. If you're going into concrete or brick then use the supplied expansion bolts. If going into wood, use lag bolts. Hang the awning onto the wall brackets. Slide the square torsion bar into the open part of the wall brackets. Secure them into place with the supplied retaining bolts, washers, and nuts. Now push open on the remote control and let it go until it stops. From here you will need to set the awning limits to set how far it will go before it stops. The limit settings are above the manual rotary lever. The top is the outer limit and the bottom is the inner limit. Open the awning as far as it goes and then turn the outer limit setting until the awning opens to where you want it. Then close it. When it stops, turn the inner limit setting until it closes to where you want it. Use the motor regulating rod for this.
Now adjust the pitch or angle. On the side, the top bolt can slide to change the pitch and the bottom bolt helps lock it into place. When the angle is right, then put a third supplied bolt and knot on the end to hold the sliding bolt in place. To open and close the awning manually, use the hand crank to turn the manual rotary lever. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest videos. Thank you.